All right, today we'll see the last round of matches. A pair of matches, of course. Ghana versus Egypt is one to look out for. And then uh, we have another one, which is quite inconsequential, though. Uh, Uganda-Mali. Uganda have to play for prestige. Mali still have a shot of qualifying, though. If they beat Uganda uh, by about up to three goals and uh, expect that Ghana lose to Egypt or Egypt lose to Ghana, as it were, because Ghana have already qualified. Uh, Shagun and Aki, uh, let's quickly do this. We already have some uh, quarterfinal pairings. Uh, Senegal will be taking on Cameroon. Tunisia will be taking on Burkina Faso. Senegal, Cameroon. Well, you know, for a lot of Nigerians at least, um, we weren't excited at the beginning of uh, this upcoming because Nigeria was not there. Definitely. And some football being played was not too great. But it's beginning to pick up steam now. Now, this is a, this is a fixture that a lot of real football fans would like to see. Cameroon, they're not doing too badly. None of them is doing too badly. And it's... Is it, not an, is it not an unfortunate quarterfinal pairing? These are two great teams that should both of them should be. In, well, if, in you the to, if, you, if you want to win the, if you want to win a major trophy, you've got to beat the big boys on the way. You can't have it any other easy way. All right. So this is one of the challenges to know who really deserves to be champion. So definitely, you can blame anyone. Uh, let's talk about the other specified uh, quarterfinal: Tunisia, Burkina Faso. Uh, look at how Tunisia, you know. Uh, losing to Senegal in their first game and then eventually qualifying. Do you think they have something to prove? Uh, you know, apart from Algeria, I think the North African sides have been quite um, impressive That's in this right. game. They've tended, you know, like all good tournament teams, to improve with each and every game. You can see what Morocco did uh, yesterday to, to a very desperate Cote d'Ivoire. Right. Tunisia is looking up. Uh, Ghana and Egypt, basically, if they play a draw, they're both around through. But That's Egypt... Right. That knocked us out of this half con anyway. Still have that against them. But hey, would what can you say? Seven knocked, times would winner. You, would you want them knocked out? At no, not really, because I don't like Ghana any better. So, <laughs> <laughs> so your brothers. Yeah, my brothers. <laughs> yeah, right, so, so it's, the it's quick prediction: Tunisia, Burkina Faso. Um, uh, Tunisia. I think I think they're getting better as the tournament uh, get, get goes on. All right, let's look at you know the fallout of uh, you know the Afghan so far. There's no Mares anymore. No Obama Yang. There's no Bailey. There's no Bailey. There's no Bonnie. There's no Slimani. Uh, there's uh, no Adibayo. Adibayo. And there's no Zahar as well. Um, yesterday was a very incredible day, but it was it, it was historic, yet very painful for the Ivorians. The same coach that led you to victory in 2015 knocked you out of the Afghan. Well, the, he, he's really proven to be a very Effective, a very effective manager. He's won, the, he's won it twice now? Yeah, yeah. twice. Right. With different so, countries. So definitely he's proven himself. That you can't take anything away from him. But um, you can't really complain about who is going to be there or is not going to be there anymore. It's about if your team wins, that means they were better than you. We can say the team that, was, that, that, that lost should still be in the tournament because of certain players. Well, I know maybe for the, for the commercial purposes and so on, we'll want the big names to remain at the tournament, but whoever knocks each other out well, deserves to be in that place. So we have, we'll absolutely have to support them. Um, AY shouldn't be on this set <laughs> to predict anymore. <laughs> he predicted that Cote d'Ivoire, uh, you know, with Zaha and a Bailey, they will make it to the semi-final. He also predicted a Gabon you know, uh, quarterfinal death, which didn't come true. And um, as expected, did you expect the Gabon would fall, by the way, Sir? Uh, not necessarily, to be honest. Um, I, I thought they'd do well, considering that they hold stage, although they don't really have that much of a pedigree. But, you know, at the end of the day, Obama was talking about bad preparations. What bad preparation stops you from doing an Ayigbeni? You go, you miss the, the, a goal, yeah. a ball that was right in front of you. I mean, you know, all it was, it was a tapping, you know. So Gabon, the day, had chances to put Cameroon to bed. They needed that victory. They didn't, they weren't able to achieve it. So, and against a Cameroon that was without at least six or seven of their, of their, their first team of their, of their squad. So, okay, you know, kudos to Cameroon, who, who are another tournament team. They have that pedigree in Africa before. No matter what team, the Indomitian Lions, they will always be a solid team. Yeah, we'll definitely talk more about the Afghan in the coming days. But uh, quickly, let's do this. Your flops of the tournament so far? Uh, Algeria, definitely. Oh, Cote d'Ivoire. Um, the, apparently, their friend, their lead-up was, was less than impressive. And for the defending champions, 
the only thing worse than the final champions not getting to the knockout stage is, is not to qualify for two, <laughs> for two tournaments back to back. That's the only thing worse. <laughs> yeah, that's Nigeria. And of course, uh, the most impressive so far, you'd mentioned Cameroon, I guess. Yeah, Cameroon. Cameroon. Like he, like Shego said, no matter the team they put out there, like their name says, Dominican Lions, they'll remain indomitable. Um, Morocco? Um, it's the first time they've qualified for the quarterfinals in. 44 years. That's interesting. Uh, no, okay, they, they, in uh, 22 years. No, uh, 88. Yeah, I was it 22. That was Morocco 90, 88. No, they, they oh, after that? the quarterfinals in uh, 94. Tunisia 94. That's the last time they okay. got to the quarterfinals. But they won it 44 years ago. So probably that's... Uh, Maybe this day, yeah. 88. With the... With the no, Morocco 88. Morocco Maroc is... They got to seven. We, we knocked them out. So okay, the we seven, knocked them. Yeah, Maroc They have eight. the special one. No, Morocco 88. Okay, Morocco 88. Mm -hmm. They have, they have the special one, have it or not. Do you think they can do it? Well, they can do it. They're definitely in there in the mix. But, uh, you know, the way the games have gone, you can't really stick out your neck and say, this is the team I'm going to put my money on. Any team can knock any team out. The names are not going to play this at this stage. The teams I've really been impressed with, uh, Democratic Republic of Congo. That's right. Uh, Senegal, Tunisia and Morocco. Yeah. Ghana is Ghana, to be honest with you. Yeah. You know, Ghana, you know... Well, they're going to slow the camera in Ghana, Ghana is Ghana. They, they've done the needful. You know, they've ground out results. They've qualified back-to-back yeah. 1-0 -back victories. They probably, I don't know, I don't see anything against Egypt being anything more than a draw. You know, and and, and Egypt as well. So, but as I said, DTS really, uh, the Democratic Republic of Ghana really, and Senegal has, even in the game that they didn't need to win, they still ground out uh, a result. Well, here are the permutations. If Ghana lose to Egypt today, they finish in second place. And they get to face DR Congo, mm. <laughs> which, might, which might get them out of the tournament, you think? Right now, nobody wants to play DR Congo. Nobody. But, yeah, what, but at this fine. stage, knockout football, you, I remember when we won it in 2013, I, I was in South Africa then, and it was, oh, Cote d'Ivoire, because oh, the it. perennial, you know, and uh, then we did it. I remember on Twitter, they said, oh, we can't win. One guy even wrote that, I, I, I put my life on it. I said, guy, that means you don't die. And We're going to win this it game. Took us only one yeah. game. And the way Ghana are going, they only score one goal and then they, they get the job done. Mm. All right, lots of uh, talking points at AFCON. Um, Kabananga, uh, Junior Kabananga is currently the highest goal scorer. Three goals. Um, the same, you know, goals scored by Obama Young, uh, Mares and Slimani. But thanks uh, to uh, Lucky for Kabananga, those three players are out. So he stands alone in the top goal scorers charts. A lot more to talk about. We'll wait until after today's final group games in Group B.